name is Chase Morley. I'm 16, and this story is about my grandma who attended residential schools. Today is the day I set off to the residential school. I don't really know how to feel about all this. In a way, I feel sadness. I do not look forward to this. These people are demanding we go to these schools, and if we don't, our parents go to jail. The worst part yet is that they don't understand us. They want so much from us and why. My mother has yet braided my long hair that reaches below my waist. She wants me to look nice for my first day of school. My father is wise just like the elders here, but he doesn't seem himself today. There are kids who have not come back yet, and is he thinking that will be me? I would rather live in peace with my family. My cousins are also being taken away as well. Many of the kids from my reserve, Kakawish to Howe, we are also leaving. We are going to Portage La Prairie Residential School in Manitoba, which is quite a ways from home. When I arrived at the residential school, I felt afraid of what was to come. I was spooked by the nuns at first. They guided me to the room where I stayed. They demanded me to take off my clothes. In return, they gave me denim clothes, which were a weird feeling to me. They cut my hair so short, they made me take a shower, and then sprayed me with insecticide because they thought I was dirty and had bugs on me. It felt like I was in prison. My freedom stripped away from me. Every time I spoke my language to try to respond to them, they would slap my little arms, which would hurt. I saw many of the kids from my reserve hurt as well. I couldn't stand to see this happen, so the only thing I could do was close my eyes and cover my ears. Learning what they spoke was brutal and hard. They would ask me something and I would try to speak, but they slapped me. They, would, they made my arms blue and black for the next coming weeks. Every time I spoke, I would feel pain. I would start crying all the time. Two months it took to learn their language. You could only imagine the pain they caused, caused me. It traumatized to my bones. It traumatized me to my bones. The nuns were not friendly as it sounded. I had a friend and he was just a little bit older than me. He would cry his soul out every time he couldn't understand and spoke our language. Every time he cried, I would cry for him. The nuns noticed this and smacked me. They would tell me that they smacked me was because I would have a reason to cry. I'm sorry. Learning their language was hard, painful, but quick. I didn't really like getting baptized. They made it sound that we had evil spirits in us from our culture and we had to get rid of those. Our culture was the last thing stripped from us, just like our freedom. On that day, they changed us. They wanted to remove the evil surroundings of family from us. They wouldn't want me to see my family either. Once we were baptized, that was the last of our true selves, as later we would forget most of our language. When we got baptized, our culture was gone from us. At the end of the year, we would be able to come see our family again. It was one of the only things that made me feel happy throughout the years. I would be able to see my family, but it was a little hard to speak now since most of my natural language faded away. We would still see our smiles and it was nice to be home. Graduation of the residential school was the best part. I knew some kids that didn't come back home unfortunately, and my heart would drop every time I heard that. I would be thankful I came home. On June 11th, 2008, the Prime Minister of Canada apologized for what happened to us and who attended the schools and experienced physical abuse, sexual abuse, and emotional abuse. He talked about how he apologized for the suffering of Aboriginal children. I didn't know how to feel. Some reassurance came, but there was a little bit of an anger deep down inside me. They paid me for the years I attended as well. My people and culture are the essence of this country and the many attempts to erase our identities 
hurt me deeply. Even though the past cannot be changed and the anger and the PTSD still stand with me, I forgave them because it was the right thing to do. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was a great idea. I was happy to hear that the legacy of the stories of the schools were being told. It's nice that the world will know this and what happened and that the next generations can learn about this. Not only does the residential schools affect me, but my kids and grandkids as well. To speak about all of these stories, they don't hurt me as much, but the pain still stings. As everyone else that went through it just like me. It could be painful, but in the end, telling someone helps. Even though I'm not in schools anymore, and it's been a while since it ended, I still have these cuts of trauma that sting. It's hard to speak in my language without thinking there's a nun behind me right about to smack me. I don't always think of it a lot, but when I do, all of my flashbacks put me in a daydream. I'm happy they are gone, but I'm sad I didn't have that peaceful childhood I always thought I would have. I'm thankful my family made it out as well. We don't speak about it, but I do tell stories to my grandkids and kids about it. It's important that they know it because it's part of their, their identities. Since the residential schools, I have been trying to maintain my culture, and by doing that, I go to many ceremonies, sweats, and powwows. I do feel more at peace, but like I said, the cut still stings. But I don't feel it all the time, just sometimes. Yeah.